we are live but i'm just going to set up my facebook because my tech knowledge in spite of reaching 100 mom somebody will have to help me to uh -huh. set, this, set this up seamlessly but um one day i will take a course on it right now i don't have time to take courses i just have the time to go live so just we're there so set up set up set up because my tech yep see that echo thing that comes i have to switch it off and then we can start um and 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 96 i just can't believe i'm just four interviews away um in fact three interviews away from 100 mom uh reaching the 100 mom just three interviews away and i was telling lj right now i cannot sit anymore in my interviews i'm so excited um that i can't and i want to thank uh everyone who supported this and i've not done it time so before i start this interview my pillars uh, who helped me when uh, i just started it believing in it debbie uh, francis melanie kavita kirtana we're doing it we're reaching so high five to all of you for supporting it my editing team who's who's sitting with story um living the stories just the way i am sumitra elizabeth um just you know accepting to read these stories rewrite them new stories come in there's exchange there's something and doing it wholly with pure heart and effort again and thank you to all the mothers Yamil, uh, Yamil is there Renu uh, is there uh, there are many mothers Sarah who've constantly been in the comments helping me uh, Dr. Zeta Williams always in all interviews commenting uh, Sarah's mom uh, so I'm just thanking everybody right now because I'm excited. This is the last four. This is the last three uh, we're reaching. So then big, big, big chunk of blessing. I was talking to LJ and support uh, in terms of purely love and energy behind this project. So we are making it. Welcome to the 96th spot, uh, LJ. And uh, I'm excited to take this interview ahead. Uh, I always say this. I will say it again. Mums who live their story tell their story the best. So please go ahead, introduce yourself, and welcome to the book. Thank you, Shika, for having me. I am busting. I'm super excited. I'm privileged to be here. I am LJ Raspler, a native New Yorker, born and raised. I am living currently in Virginia, and I'm on a mission to change thousands of lives, veterans' lives, my true heroes. And um, I'm just ready for you, Shika. Whatever you want to ask, whatever you want to know, I am ready to shed my life. This LJ's journey till here, and then we'll take your journey as a mom, and then we will go further about a little bit of discussion about self-portrait, and then we will welcome you to the book with your dream. So that's the series we're going to take. So right now, just LJ and, uh, LJ's journey till here, what she's been doing, how it's been, whatever you want to say, the stage is all yours. The spotlight is on you. Oh, the spotlight's on me. I, I, you know, this is, this takes practice and practice and practice to get comfortable being uncomfortable in front of a camera. I'm usually been this, we talked about this yesterday. A little bit of self, as I said, I am a native New Yorker living in Virginia. I have been married, gratefully to Jesse for 30 years. I am a mom of three adult children, two boys, Caleb and Noah, and my daughter, my precious little girl, 23 daily. Uh, yeah, I, I was a stay-at-home mom, Sheikha, for 15 years. Um, I was running a committee at that time. I was a Girl Scout leader for my daughter, but I also was running a committee for um, men who were homeless. They were living in the woods here in New York, and I felt called to, to serve them and to do something. And I said I wanted to start a committee for homeless men and it was meant with resistance. And we got together with area houses of worship and shortly thereafter in 2004, uh, I ran this committee for seven years, for excuse me, for four years. And we provided meals, we provided coats and toiletries and we would sit down and dine with these men. It was, a life-changing experience that had set me on that path of wanting to be more and more and more and serve the greater good. Um, while running the committee, I decided to go back to school to become a teacher. 
And yeah, I, I became a teacher in 2011 at the age of 49. And I taught for almost 10 years and I happily left teaching in October of 2019. And I was called once again to be of service. And that is to serve veterans in need. But I need to backtrack really quickly on this because I can't, I have so many people to thank Shika, but my very personal journey with a rare autoimmune disorder, it's called Guillain-Barre syndrome. And that is, um, I'm telling my story after almost 13 years of silence in this collaborative book project that the book is about to be released any day. So I'm very, very excited to be a co-author. But my journey with Guillain-Barre syndrome took me to uh, the darkest days of my life and it changed my life and I lived in fear and chronic pain and in 2019 I met my mission partner and we began to talk I was watching her go live she has a very personal journey I want to send a shout out to Irene Vaxberg and she introduced me to um, a line of products optimized well-being holistic healthcare products and I promote it and I bring it to veterans to change lives, to optimize well being, to live a better quality of life because it's changed my life. All my neurological deficits, all my foggy brain, all my inconveniences, as I lovingly call them and refer to them, have all but ceased. So I share this passionately, and my mission, purpose, and passion is to provide these products to those suffering from anxiousness and, and stress. And I want to change thousands and thousands of lives. And that's where it took me to the veterans. And um, once we moved, I aligned with my partner where I'm going to start the Cooking for Virginia Veterans program. And my goal is for it to be, by the end of this year, a nonprofit. So. It fills my heart to give back, uh, you know, and count my blessings every day for, for the gifts that I've been giving with grace and gratitude each and every day. Beautiful and uh, beautiful. Uh, and we, I'm also getting to know a little bit about you. In fact, um, my husband had an autoimmune um, about, about six, eight, seven, eight years back. But it did aggravate uh, five years back. And then uh, at that time, uh, I was already on a journey of discovering uh, that there is an alternate way of healing. There was, I, was, I don't know why. I always think that the universe is preparing me. I'm a very curious, big curious cat. I just keep, like, if I know something, I always jump on to time to know that. And then I uh, actually knew a little bit. So I told him, I looked at his medicines and I was like, wow, all these are steroids. And I was a very bad student academically in school. I never read, read books. And uh, if, uh, but for this, I deep dive and I read hundreds of books, not hundreds, but many, many, many books. I it looked like hundreds of books, but almost for three years I was reading. I keep books, I was reading, listening documentaries. I had a mentor and he reversed his autoimmune only with food and lifestyle without giving him any steroids. And I jumped into the same lifestyle of whole food plant based and uh, add a, a little, um, you know, uh, it's a non-profit, it was just an initiative that I had called Health Diaries, where I brought in more and more people and made them aware, voluntary to get, uh, you know, trainers in my house, and I used to get the neighbors, I had a big neighborhood, and many other people got, you know, saved with this whole plan base, um, you know, uh, and so I just know what it is. Uh, when uh, for me it was my family member, my husband getting through it, but he jumped onto it and then reversal took three four years. But it's a journey. It's a journey when you get there in an autoimmune where they tell you that there is no there is no cure and autoimmune just gets worse and all these things are told to you. So it does get quite crazy. And then he was pretty young. Uh, he was 32, 33 and we had kids and I we had a whole life ahead. Uh, but we did it and he he's a superstar of mine who who trusted it and did it like a superstar and shook hands with people and then inspired many people in his office as well to join 
to join to do that. So I know that journey of autoimmune can be very, and a rare autoimmune is even more because you don't have any answers. So I'm with you as a family member. I know what all, oh, it can be quite a, quite a unknown journey, but there's a way out and you are out of it and I'm out of it. I mean, my family's out of it and it's, that's a good message to the world. You, what you say resonates so much with me because, and it's in part of my, my co-authored book, but I will share this, that because this immune autoimmune that I had was so rare, I didn't talk about it. I did not go to a doctor. I was too afraid to know the truth because I had known back in the 1970s, a woman, vibrant woman who died from it. And with, with my rare autoimmune disorder, people end up in wheelchairs, they're paralyzed, they can't breathe. And I went on a holistic healing journey for 12 years. I did kinesiology and chiropractic care. I ate, there were a lot of things I developed digestive issues, but I started acupuncture and I drink, you know, I take Chinese herbs and um, I do energy work. And I've been doing this for the last few years. And there's a point where you, you come down that path and you say, do I want typical medic, you know, typical traditional medicine, or do I want the alternative? And I don't advocate everybody to do what I did, but for me, it was the path I chose and all that I've known. And yeah, you know, when I went down, I was, I was a mom, I was going to graduate school. I had the most pressure ever right. and I don't know I came through it, but you know, where there is a will, there's a way, but even bigger than that, I knew my path was meant to be great. I knew that as a woman who is, considers myself ordinary, but tries to do extraordinary things, I knew I just had to sit and be and wait for that opportunity. And the last two years have been quite remarkable for me. Um, and I'm grateful for everything. Everyone that's come into my life, you know, a shout out to Debbie Prediger for suggesting me for your project and I'm humbled by it and honored. But this is what it is. You know, we put out the goodness, we receive the goodness. We do, we do. And Debbie has been supporting this project uh, since the beginning uh, with believing in it when she was 11th mom. And she's here in, in the chat with us. There's Lucy who's been supporting it since the beginning. Uh, going out rightly everywhere, talking about it, bringing it on, supporting me, cheerleading. They're cheerleaders. They're, they're, there's Francis, there's Melanie. There's all these people have been just standing with me from day one. And um, just saying that, go girl, go girl. Patty here um, joining us in the comments. So um, it's beautiful. And I understand the blessing uh, part so much because um, when you start, this uh, when you start following the clues when you start knowing that these clues are meant for you to move forward and you start opening it you know one by one one by one without sometimes those clues are packed up in a very dirty wrapper and you're like should i should i not should i should i not should i should i not and then you pick it up and you open it up and there's golden words written right there for you to go next step you know so that's what happens and that's what i feel that i have just i just saw this peak and then i uh did not see the rope first but i just started climbing and then the rope dropped in, and then i saw the rope and then the lift dropped in and i took the lift and then i think the angels just picked it up to the next level and we're reaching 100. so it all happened like that for me there's been quite a journey spiritual breakthroughs for me um a whole tool of self-portrait has emerged out of it and i am very glad to bring it to the world and uh, I, I am a family member with an autoimmune and I know the fears. And at that time also, when I, I used to know, I was like, okay. And people, when you take these paths, when you, don't, when you don't agree with the medical industry, when you don't listen to them, and when you say, no, I think we, we can do it on our own without these uh, medicines. And we take that step. And my husband and me did that with the autoimmune and we conquered it. And today, uh, Happily, we, we are in a very good, blessed space. When I started it, it was scary. Five years, it was amazing. I started this, it was scary. Seven months, it's amazing. So I don't know how frequently all that amazing stuff will keep happening. So let's move forward from there with your passion for veterans 
and your entire uh, work now being dedicated to that how did that emerge and yes you've combat autoimmune and you came out and now a book is coming out and now you're supporting the veterans so let's now, talk i love to talk about this and i have to tell you when we were talking last night i took a lot of notes and i i'm a note taker um because i like to reread and see but i'll i'll preface it by saying you, you hit a couple of things with me last night, and I'm going to lead that, use that to lead into why the veterans. Um, human possibility. You know, I, it's about, through my own self-development journey, Shika, you know, because I embraced it after I left teaching. I had never taken that time for myself. So that's the quiet and stillness in my mind and opening me up to my, my very human existence, my divine truth. Um, I want to shine my light. I want to be that catalyst for inspiration because the name of the book that I'm in is unstoppable. Um, it's unstoppable. Be fierce, fearless, and unf withable in business and life. And it's a woman's compilation of stories. And and I look at myself and I say, you know, I am no different than anybody else, but I'm in company with some women that are also doing some powerful things. So when I left teaching, I, I knew I would not sit idle. I, I'm not that type of person I need to be doing. It's, it's what fills my heart. And my father is, my father's been gone and I have his picture staring right at me each and every day. Uh, my father's gone almost 19 years and he's a Naval, he was a Navy veteran. Never talked about his service, but I knew he served. So when I left, he, it, was, it came to me like this divine intervention and said, you need to serve veterans. And people have said, why, why, why? And I say, why not? You know, I don't know anyone that without justification takes that oath, signs on the dotted line and says, I'm going to risk my life to serve my country. How can you not admire that? Right, wrong, or indifferent? It's someone that will die for a cause. And, you know, I, I admire that, I respect that. And I've talked to a lot of veterans since my journey began two years ago. And I'm, I'm always taken aback by their honesty and their forthright, because they don't talk about it. But somehow my questioning and my, my kind of investigative um, subtleties bring them out to the forefront. And you know, training and military training and boot camp is a very personal journey for all these men and women that I've shared, talked with. So I, I embarked on this journey and I had never done social media. So I did a Tony Robbins uh, comeback challenge and I started going into a group and I came live and I talked on social media about my very personal journey with the Ombre syndrome. But it was getting uncomfortable being uncomfortable in this space as I am right now with you, which is not my favorite place. However, I started aligning myself with more and more. And that was the veterans. And I, you know, in the two years, I've made some really powerful connections. People, I have to send a shout out to my, my buddy and friend and mentor, veteran Trey Ryder. He, I am the moderator for his group. Um, forging life. And that's my mantra, forge life. And, you know, it's that step, those very steps that we take to up level and transform ourselves. So now once I made my move, um, I, I had made a call. I went out on a limb and I called my new partner in my venture to start the cooking program in Virginia. Um, Jerry Kruger of VFW Post 609 here in Old Town, Alexandria. He's on board and we're going to bring, have a volunteer base and bring thousands of meals to housebound veterans and their families. And it's an umbrella. The Cooking for Virginia Veterans Program is an, um, is an umbrella for many, many different things. Fundraiser. I'm a fundraiser. I fundraise for veterans using my holistic care products. Um, but I also hold, um, you know, live event. I hold events online, these Eventbrite events. I'm coming up to one in February, Sheikah, my next one. And that's going to be the impetus for me holding my first event to honor Vietnam veterans on, on Vietnam's Veterans Day, 
March 29th here in Alexandria, and we're going to honor Vietnam veterans. Um, I give back, you know, for all that I've been gifted, my health, my happiness, my inner peace, I give it back. And I want to share something, and it doesn't take a lot of time to give, to pay it forward with grace and gratitude, right? So I just spent the last 24 days on a road trip with my husband. We drove across country, we explored, we hiked, we had so many adventures, but as part of my journey, Jesse and I visit Veterans Memorial Gardens and, and um, you know, um, it's my way of saying thank you for your service. And the last memorial that we went to, the smallest perhaps, but the most impressive was called the Dogwood Vietnam Memorial in Virginia. Charlottesville, Virginia. And in that, in that memorial was um, 28 Vietnam veterans memorialized for their service and died for their country. They were from 28 years of age to 41. And where I live, I'm near Arlington National Cemetery in, D in Virginia. Um, eight of these men, young men are buried. And in honor of the Vietnam veterans who have served this country, I intend on going to each one of their graves and pay tribute to them and say thank you. Because, you know, again, it's, it's a very emotional feeling to know that these people died for their country and gave back. And I need to give more and more and shed my own light and, um, and do right by these people who are struggling on a day-to-day -day because on average 22 veterans die by suicide on a daily basis. And the number is probably actually higher. Yeah. You know, so, you did, uh, I did this because um, that's like, that's what energy connections are, LJ. I just thought of this mom. I had connected to Susie Freeman and uh, just before even the project started. And I really tried to get her in. And her mission is to, because her boy is in the army, and her mission is to um, uh, save these suicides because she realized that very young boys were, pre were committing suicides in the army. And her mission was, and really tried to get catch hold of her, but you know, who's ever meant to be in the book, to be in the yeah. book. Uh, she, I couldn't catch her, but I will, something will happen. But she was mentioning to me that um, she found out a lot of suicide. And you said, I thought of it and you said it. So I did, like, uh, I was about to mention that. And I did come to know about that uh, from her, that young boys were committing suicide um, in, in, in the army. And she was out there uh, to speak for, on their behalf and to save them because her own boy was in the army at the age of 21. So when you said that, yes, it's, it's, it's definitely so, you know, all of us are working and you were talking about veterans. I was thinking about moms. For me, even moms have served endlessly forever and ever and ever. Somebody needs to speak up on their behalf. And when you were talking simultaneously there and there are homeless mothers here. And so all of us pick up our little cause and we move forward. And what you're doing with veterans, I'm doing with moms. And the population of moms is even more than the population of Kind of people who are struggling and there are many moms who are struggling uh, tremendously um, and there are homeless moms and I was always asked why are you not taking stories from villages but I said well that's this is again an umbrella it's the beginning and we will reach there they can't take their portraits they can't come for interviews they don't know the language uh, we will reach through these hundred moms but these hundred moms and amplify the message out and bring more mothers uh, and a light to their life. So, yes, you said about suicide and it took me there. And uh, I think any country's army uh, veterans or people serving in the army, it's the choice that a human takes, which is a very amazing choice. And some of them dream of that choice. And when you hear. Old Sheikah, it's, you know, when you step outside yourself to give back for whatever reason and for whatever cause, it, it, it sets the tone for your very existence. And I'm all about that, you know, that empowerment, that joy, that light. But when you make that choice that you don't know whether you're going to live or die in your service, you know, 
these moms that leave their families to be of service, anyone, it's, it resonates. It calls to me to say, hey, if I've had a bad day, what am I complaining about? What am, right? What is, what is my struggle today? Is it, is it worth the time and energy to put into that struggle? Because we all can complain, right? It's what, when you look at the people that struggle, I say, puts me down and says, you know what? Everything is well in my world. What am I complaining about? I have all my limbs. I have all my senses, gratefully, you know? It's, there's so many people that struggle. And I say, that 22 to zero for me is my mission and my passion. And I do it with these products. And I'm gonna share with you because I, as part of my journey in these holistic healthcare products, I wear this, and this is called a cognitive boost sleeve. And this, I was diagnosed with anxiety and PTSD. This is for memory and focus and feelings of anxiousness and stress. And this is what I wanna get on each and every veteran to optimize their well being. It triggers a response in the brain and optimizes your neurology. So we, when we're, when we're functioning better, we do more in life. You know, my, my mission is really a very big, it's huge because I want to run retreats, holistic healthcare retreats to bring veterans and their families to a place for a weekend free of charge that we can talk and engage in healthcare practices, yoga, equine therapy, and meditation, and all these beautiful things. But I'm just so grateful for my journey. And I think that connecting with all the moms that I have, it, you know, I'm a small fish in a very big sea. I'll and to, together I'll we get so much momentum. <laughs> you know, when you just said, uh, when you just said, um, retreat. Sarah Ketchidin just entered and she does retreats and maybe we can uh, collect oh, yeah. and she does retreats and she does she exactly does what you're talking about meditation and she does things maybe you meet Sarah and something comes out and we can do the fundraising and bring, bring uh, retreats to Sarah's place and um, help these veterans feel at ease because she's all about meditation and she's in pottery and then I've seen her grow and I, I really I feel her mission uh, she's just started on it but I feel her mission and we never know we never know I, we have the retreats wherever we bring them we don't know but putting it out in the universe is is what uh, is the starting point and you're doing it right there and we have 100 moms supporting you to do that um, you know we had an F I always tell us Air Force officer who, when she became pregnant, she was still serving. When she um, she was uh, so Leh Ladakh Himalayas, I have traveled there for 14 days before I had a baby, and I told myself I will never take my children till the time they are 15 years of age to that place because of unpredictability, lack of oxygen, landslides, snow, and um, for three four hundred kilometers there's no life, there's no trees, there's nothing. Like you know, you just keep going on and on into these. A uh, very uh, beautiful terrain, uh, Ladakh, uh, when you do a drive. And here is this mom from Air Force. She becomes pregnant and then she has a baby while she's serving. And then she's told to go to this place as to serve, like for the next post. And uh, she's the first Air Force office, first batch of Air Force officers from our country. And um, 25 years back, that place was even worse than when I traveled. Now it still has a little road and they were in mud houses and she takes her two-year-old child there, right? And she does, she says, my child is not going to stay with my mom. I will take it. It was not a family posting, but she takes the child. They stay there for two years in minus 30 degrees in mud houses while she's patrolling, while she's taking care. She gives her child to the bachelors and goes to work sometimes when both husband and wife can't be uh, at duty. Sometimes she wraps the child and puts her back in the Jeep in the snow and she drives. Sometimes, and, and for two years, she gave her uh, child, which is like, this is my very favorite story because she gave her child, uh, there's no food. You can't, the food takes one month to reach. You know, it takes one month to reach. So they have packet stuff that reaches there, all dehydrated. She doesn't want to give that. So she gives her child uh, in a pressure cooker, potato, lentil, and rice for two years. 
So when you compare that, like when you compare that, and when I heard that story, she was not coming and I said, I'm holding your story in my heart. Because when I make a fresh meal in the morning and I make the second meal fresh, and sometimes I'm exhausted and I've done so much and I go for the third meal and I feel guilty that I'm giving the morning meal to my child in the evening. <laughs> yeah, so, I really. You, you put that in perspective and you, you just think that where are you stuck? Oh and we brought that child in the interview because I wanted to honor her after 25 years again. So we brought the child and the mom in the interview to honor her again. I said, I can't get the president. The president honored you when you were the first batch, but I can bring your child back. And we were a beautiful child she's raised. Um, um, she lost her husband in the process. Uh, she took cancer and what all she went through now. But I'm just saying that when you put, we were talking about perspective and especially the perspective of the army officers and people who are at the border. And when a mom goes also in the border, it's another level. It's another level when the mom has to be taken away from her child. And uh, it's a very tearing apart thing, but she still chooses. This mom chose to take her child, but many moms choose to go without them and stay in that tearing state just to serve your country. It's, it, it deserves, it deserves all the respect it deserves all the support it deserves all the hugs and all the love that we can give them anywhere in the country any country right and you're talking about the vietnam war my 99th mom uh is from vietnam and she um uh, she left her uh she left during the war in vietnam she left from there because i think she lost her husband in the war or she lost her husband and she left in a boat with five kids to come to America to have an American dream. And she came here, she was a butcher and her children used to be embarrassed that she's a butcher. But from there, how she struggled in a country like that, where she didn't know language, from becoming a manager to becoming an EA to a good company. And today her children are all top corporate people in uh, their careers. So a mom taking a boat because she has five kids and she knows her country is not safe and she takes a boat to come and then she's settled somewhere else. I have the respect for that. You know, this is these are stories you're sharing of inspiration. And that's why I say, you know, we have to put it into perspective because when we think about our own lives, yeah, we all do great things if we make those choices. But when you, and the thing is, Sheikha, if you would ask this lady, would she do it again, this mom, take her baby? You know, I bet you she would do it again because that separation, like I could not even imagine being separated from my child, my children. You know, that's the story of overcoming all obstacles. She's a mom and that's the power of who you are. You know, it's a burden. Some people see it as a curse, but it's also a gift. Yeah, and we have very beautiful stories. We have Leslie who left with 12 children out in the middle of the night because of an abusive marriage. And in the middle of the night, she took all 12 of them, you know, any human possible when they have an abusive marriage and she's had 12 children and she's had enough and she one fine day leaves, but she leaves with all 12 and she's still with all 12. And, you wow. know, uh, you know, a mom could just, as a human being could say, I've had enough, I'm leaving. But she left with, because children are not safe, she leaves. So we have stories here and it's just made me more and more, uh, uh, you know, I'm taking it to the level that really in comparison, um, we can move forward. And that's why I was telling you when my child got burned, I keep telling people, I was holding these stories and she just got burned with tea. Uh, I just said tea because there are mothers here with 18 surgeries of their children before the age of 13, 18. There are mothers here whose children said they will not survive and they worked so hard after one year declared everything is normal because they worked so hard from the time they were born. So I was sitting there and I just, with my son screaming away, I would just always say that if those moms can do it, so can I. And that's how this book has started. And this is what the mission of this book is, that these stories are going to be held. These stories are going to get amplified. These stories, it doesn't matter. Some moms feel, oh, our story is not so intense. It doesn't matter. Every mom who's come here is a shade of mom who's going to be related to another shade of mom who needs to hear it. That's for sure. That's for sure. They're all kind of here. So there could be just a simple story of a mom trying to protect her child from pollution in Delhi, New Delhi, and she takes them to a mountain. And then she realizes that there are these local uh, 
saris uh, like these women who are who make saris so she makes rag dolls and her child is in the hostel and she promises i will be nearby your hostel so now she started this whole mission she makes rag dolls out of saris old saris give drop to these women and those uh, dolls are all famous women across the world so she's bringing the women across the world uh, through that rag dolls but using indian sarees and old material and giving jobs to that but also at the same time honoring women mother teresa uh, you know all and she had a long list of women she is bringing writers and and using that rag dolls and i told her in her interview that my 100 moms will have their own individual rag dolls let me just get some money and i will give these moms these moms are the 100 moms with their rag dolls made out of sarees so we have some incredible women uh, moving forward including you and this is just started this is just started because if you see my messenger box at this moment i'm reaching 100 i am getting bombarded in the middle of the night with messages after messages the mothers telling me i've lost my child i've lost my husband can you take my story in but i did this and i did that and i'm hearing stories after stories and i have to i have to hold all these stories i don't know how there is a plan but the mothers in the book 100 mums are going to be in the book they will amplify it and i'm hoping that they can take this message ahead uh with this book and the other mothers will get the space uh we will create the space for everyone to come and tell their story if nothing else at least come and tell the stories and do that the vision for this shika and that's what i was going to do. and you know something worth mentioning here Yes, my children are older. You know, my older boy will be 30 in a few weeks and my other one, my other son now is 27 and my daughter is 23. And I have to say for the young moms out there, if I may be so bold and and I have to say this that when I was home, my husband worked very long hours. I was alone 12 hours a day. Gratefully he was home on the weekends. I wasn't able to step back. I had all that chatter going on in my brain. I was, you know, everything to to everyone and I was I felt like I wanted to be an octopus and have all these different arms to be able to do everything I needed to. But the point I'm making is I couldn't step outside my role to appreciate that I brought these children into this world to give them the very best life to provide them with love and and nurture them so for the young moms outside out, out there who are working hard and juggling all those tasks remember the power of who you are that you are a mom first and foremost i lost sight of that along the way but now that my children are over older excuse me i reflect back and i say that perhaps might have been my defining moment the best moments of my entire life no matter what i do going forward that we as moms are privileged beyond right we can bring life into the world we can shape lives we can help them grow roots strong roots and send them out into the world to be good people so that's what i teach all my children but my daughter particularly um so i'm grateful for being a mom and you know i just um want to continue shining my light and showing how being a mom is really a, the ultimate privilege the ultimate sacrifice the ultimate everything yeah man uh, hera is here debbie are here they are in my workshop right at the moment and you must say what you were telling me uh, that you know i used to tell my daughter and hera and uh, Debbie, you must hear it because you are in the in my self portrait workshop where we're talking about limiting beliefs and mindset of photos and self portrait. Uh, you used to tell your daughter that um, uh, stand in front of the mirror and say, you're beautiful, you're amazing. Never forget that, you know. And you said I never did that to myself. I never stood in front of the mirror and I never said this to myself. And I today realize why why I couldn't. say that to myself when i could say that to my daughter uh, and i never wanted her to feel unworthy and that's something that resonated with me uh, with this movement um yes our children shine even more when we shine when uh, they see us climbing peaks they learn to climb peaks very fast and they don't need any push from anywhere else because they see us climbing peaks every single day 
and I'm glad my sons are watching it because my older one who's eight years old is equally excited and you just I just keep naming like I just keep dropping what he says because he's a very wise man already and he just told me um, so I said um, you're my dream you know you're my dream come true he's like oh I thought your dream was your hundred mothers and you're reaching it on your birthday I'm like yeah that's my dream yes but you're my dream so he didn't even accept it he'd already in his being accepted seeing his mother embracing this dream of bringing the 100 mothers together. So for him, he did not even associate it with himself saying, oh, I should be your dream. You know why you don't love me. He's like, huh, your dream is 100 mothers and you're reaching it on. So he's seeing his mom's dream coming true and he's already accepted it. And we think as moms that they will feel inadequate. They will feel that, you know, we don't love them. They will feel that we are spending time somewhere pushing our dreams. But they learn to dream, they accept your dreams, and they push you forward when you give up to say, ha, huh, yeah, you must do it. Like when I stopped at 75 and my younger one got burnt, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know. And he said, you're almost there, mom. 75 months done, 25 months more. And you can't stop now. And I can't. And I didn't. And I am. And I will celebrate my 100 because he is sharing my dream. And that's the message to the world that uh, we don't have to wait. Our children should be our reason to rise, not our reason to fall. The day we become a mom, it should not be. That's the day it all starts even in a bigger way. And I realized it just in eight years. Many moms have not realized it in 25 years, 30 years. They're still wondering um, what to do. And that's why this book is going to push them that I did think that I should have done it four years, five years back, but well, I realized it and I'm up and about doing uh, what I wanted to and sharing my dreams with my kids. So yes, we are there and Yamile is there. She, um, I, I must like, um, I just, I just said um, all names of all the people who supported it. But when she came and Renu uh, was my fourth mom, Yamile, uh, I can still not pronounce her name pro properly, but pardon me for that. But when she came as the fifth mom, just before that, she had invited me um, to uh, her workshop for wild women. And it was 3.30 a.m. in the night. And uh, I was telling Renu that, Renu, I'm not doing this 3.30 a.m. breastfeeding my child. I am going to be sleepy, really. And she's like, no, no. And then Yamile said, you know, you come in, your subconscious mind is open. You just listen to it. And I'm all right and honestly she's here i did not listen to anything for 35 minutes because i was just trying to wake up at 3 30 a.m i was just trying to wake up because my husband said are you sure you want to wake up at 3 30 a.m and he woke me up and he went off to sleep and i was sitting in the dark with of course my son also woke up and then i was breastfeeding and i was in the event and then um, her voice whispered in my ear saying the warrior has arrived wake up what you're meant to do and that was it and i woke up I'm standing today. Woke up at four o'clock. The six thirty. I was restless. I was just like, I've started something which was once a week. Then and then I announced hundred days, hundred moms, hundred inspiring stories will happen. And I started it. I had to stop at seventy five because I had to meet you. And I had to meet many many moms in the last twenty five days. And um, I, yeah, my subconscious I knew, but you knew it as well. That something happened. That's the connection. I love you for that. And uh, the impossible thing I announced with the belief, because I had this picture of this, I'm sitting on the floor and this warrior shoes are standing at the door and saying, get up, enough. Like you've been just going wah, 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 about it, just get up and do it. And that was her voice. And I, I said it many times and I say it again, and I don't shy away from it. I felt her support at that time to make it possible. And I announced it. So thank you. She's in the comments. So I wanted to thank her. Uh, as well, apart from my pillars and my editing team. So what's the dream? The dream is veterans. Yes, dream is veterans and making this thing uh, come true. But still, I want to know it from you. Uh, 100 self-portrait, 100 dreams. These dreams are going to come true because the book has formed its own energy. What's your dream, LJ? Mm, you know, I on my interview for my book, this week, someone said to me, LJ, what does unstoppable mean to you? Right. What is unstoppable? And I had never thought about it. I said, okay, I'm just going to be a co-author in this book and I'm going to share my story so more people can hear 
what what Guillain-Barre syndrome is. My dream is to be that catalyst for inspiration to step so far outside myself without criticism, without being that, that perfect role model. It's that perfectly imperfect person that I see to change thousands of lives, to be that catalyst of inspiration to thank the universe, to thank God for all my blessings, but to change lives and to make one person, one veteran, one day at a time, have a good day, have a better day. And it's, it's very simple, Shika. You know, I, I allow my limitless possibilities to come to the forefront. When I make the connections with people like you, I always say to myself, I met this person for a reason. I met this person for a reason. We're going to do something quite remarkable together. And that's how it is for me with the veterans. When I meet one veteran one day, each and every day, because new veterans come into my lives every day and I talk to them and I engage with them, I can change a life. I, I had a great meeting with J.R. Smith of the Veterans Ranch. He does equine therapy. We're gonna get him to try these products. We're gonna change veterans' lives to help live a better quality of life because I have been so afforded that good life. And yeah, I, I just wanted, I wanna just bring goodness to people, to make people have a better day, to bring a smile to someone. It's really not a tall order, <laughs> you know? Um, but I always do it with my feet planted firmly on the ground and know that by what I'm doing, it's allowing me to elevate my own state, but to change a life one person, one day at a time. So I'll tell you, and it's just so crazy, the last five interviews, I'm bringing something, and all the moms who are listening to this now, what came, because I'm, I'm, I'm stepping up, every mom is stepping up a clue. Just before I had a mom from, uh, who was a runner with Nike, and I announced 10,000 kilometers, uh, by 100 moms and then donated to probably Renu and two more uh, Renu this mother project and two more projects which I know moms here are supporting. France is supporting a Down syndrome uh, uh, association or something and Elizabeth is supporting uh, uh, animal welfare. So with our run, we will complete because health is very important for mothers. We are going to support walking or running, whatever, three and a half kilometers a day for 30 days. Moms are going to do 10,000 kilometers. Um, that's going to be just starting very soon. I'll organize that. But when you were speaking, yet another message knocks into my head. So I always say it because I have, uh, this space has become very sacred. And that is that your reason for being here is that all of us need to do this in our country to the veterans. And through you, it's not going to be veterans only in your country. But all of us will join hand and do something with veterans in our country and many, many people who are right now in difficult situations doing, we have moms from Saudi Arabia, we have moms from Pakistan, we have here moms from Japan, we have moms from India, Australia, and veterans are everywhere. So all of us are going to pledge something with you, leading it for veterans across the world, LJ. I don't know when and how, but this message came and I always put this space as a very sacred space. Whenever I've said something live out here, it's always happened. This will happen too. We all will support veterans in our way with whatever possible across the world. We're not going to, we're not going to just say veterans from this or that because all of them have the same life and you are here for that. Um, you're here for that. That's why you were brought to this book. And it, that's what's not, when you just said it, it just knocked in my head. Like, say it girl it just that's what that's the message came and we will do that we will run for moms with <laughs> Ludmil leading it with Renu for homeless mothers um, we will uh, support Renu because I believe in her mission of supporting homeless moms uh, and now uh, LJ steps in to help the veterans and I always say when moms step into any power they can do anything 
it's the moms who are going to save the society because of the heart that they have and what's given to them when they have children. And we are hundred of us together. We've managed to be hundred of us together. If we are of no use, the resources we've used, the paper we're going to use. I also announced by the way one day by talking to Debbie that, you know, sorry, I'm using paper for this book, but we are going to plant trees. All the hundred moms will also plant trees. Uh, and add the trees in return to the paper we're going to take from nature. Um, I know it's sounding crazy, Shikha, one thing at a time, but all of you are here for a reason. And if it knocks into my head, I want to put it out because if I don't, it will not happen. It has to get out for me. I am being used as a channel of messenger. If somebody understands that, I never used to believe in it, but there's a channel and there's a message coming through me. We are going to save the veterans of all the countries. We will do our best. We have an Air Force officer from my country here. We might have officers from other countries. We'll take their help and reach out. So that will come as well in till the time the book doesn't. I don't know where. <laughs> it makes me feel I'm emotional that by the time the book is out, a lot of dreams will already would have been met. And this book will just come out as a byproduct, I think. It will not become the main thing. It will become a byproduct. And I will call all of you in India and hug you guys and get you to India to celebrate all the stuff we would do by the time this book gets out, you know? Um, so, I feel that you just said it, that the, the book is the byproduct of the energy of all these women, all these, these beautiful, heart-centered, full-on women. I feel it. I feel the energy. And I got very, very emotional when you talked about the veterans. It's it drives me. It's, it's, they deserve it, especially in this time that we're in these unprecedented times for people to come together and to unite like this project of yours. You have no idea what this has done for me. It's, it's, it's shining its light. It's taking on a life of its own, but the power of it will last for years and years to come, my friend. It's a beautiful thing to spread awareness and to give back because you will be rewarded with an even better life for all that you're doing for the moms and recognizing so many different missions. But your vision is very powerful, never doubt that. And um, I'm, just, I, I'm just blown away. I, it takes a lot to rattle me, but this is rattling me in such a good way. It stirs me. I went to, I have to share this with you really quickly. My partner at the, the VFW Post, Jerry, he's just an awesome guy. I think he's a decorated veteran, beautiful work that he does. And he invited me to a military funeral at Arlington the other day of a man who has done remarkable things in his own life. And I had the distinct privilege of attending a military funeral, 21 gun salute. I followed, you know, all the people that were there. I was so emotional and so moved by this experience. It was impressive, but it was so inspired because it made me realize <clears throat> I get caught in my throat here at, the, at the, the realization that I need to do more and more and more, and my journey will continue. But it starts with a vision, a mission, a purpose, and passion. And I never waver from it. I'm called to serve those who have served. But no matter what our mission, we are moms and we stand united. And I am inspired by you and the women you talk about, it's, we climb those peaks, Shika. We climb those beautiful peaks and I conquer one at a time, but I will never reach the, the top because my journey will forever continue as long as I walk this earth. And that's the gift of who we are, who I am, um, and that's it. <laughs> so. Well, I must add to what it is before we wrap this up. It's not my vision. It's our vision together. I've always said it. It's us together. I am nothing if any of you steps out. 
any of you stepping out only breaks my heart because it's it was a chosen thing for all of you to be in these pages so it's not it's not me it's it's just i was chosen to uh with my crazy uh spontaneity and stuff to be doing it because the universe knew that she'll just keep blabbering it out she talks too much she just blabber it out and then she'll have to do it um so it's us together each one of us are saving a lot of a lot of people and uh, we will do it and uh, you know it's uniting and i all have been saying the mother pulse when she knows she needs help she uh, she gets this kind of stuff happening and the mother pulse is the only solution for this world to come together and veterans of any country young boys of any country boys in the army should not commit suicide because they feel left out they feel inadequate we will support them it must be happening in every country and imagine a mother holding her child next to her says i'm coming for you that's what it is that's what this mission is for the veterans and that's why you are here so you are not here don't say it's your vision now it's our vision to get these veterans across the world use the word r tap into all the women here reach out ask for help and we all will do it together i'm with you and these missions of run for the mom homeless mothers uh now the veterans and many things will get added by the time we end this uh and start a new journey so anybody who's seen 14 peaks i've been promoting that movie 14 peaks please go watch it my first peak is done i have probably 13 more peaks to do and if he can do it in 6 months and break the record of 16 years i will do it in the next 7 months and meet you guys i will keep saying it i will meet you guys this year give you the hug because i feel it every morning i feel it i'm getting out of the car and i'm meeting you guys and each of you what are you going to say to me what exactly is going to happen like i can just see it it's going to i am decided a place i was talking to my husband and i was like oh what about this place so we've decided a place where uh four days these mums are going to showcase their work we'll have the media we'll have all the attention we'll get the money to get you all here i'm done with meeting you on the screen i need to see all of you i need to give you all a hug for all the support and making this happen so welcome to the book lj it's a great edition yet again for the veterans and the mom comes to save the veterans now and Ooh. we are going yeah. to do it i'm so excited shika i'm thankful for you and you granting me this space your incredible photographic journey for women we'll do it together we'll do it together let's do yeah. it we can go off live yamire um devi jamile she's so cute it's the way she said i'm jamile she does that very sweetly sara um and devi and everybody in the comments just gone past by i can't see sonika was there yet another mom who secretly watches i keep telling her say hi to us because she cooks and she watches all our interviews i'm like come on join in and say hello to us when she when you watch it. so sonika and she was recommending a brilliant mom as well a para olympian we could get her in but we'll get her in somehow somewhere uh and um, we'll do this together bye bye and good night my children's duty start I have to go give dinner to them, and then I have three more moms coming up, and then yeah. I turn forty, and on third of February I start my day with the hundredth mom. Wait for that. Everybody should be there to join in comments to celebrate the hundred moms. See you guys. Love you guys. See you all. You don't Thank go. You. Off. You don't go off. I'm just stopping the lights.